America reeling after a week of violent demonstrations. So how do we move forward? I spoke with Vice President Mike Pence in Washington. The death of George Floyd was a tragedy. And uh, President Trump's made it clear. Justice will be served. We know now charges have been brought against all four police officers and the president immediately deployed Justice Department officials to examine the possibility of federal charges to be brought as well. But what happened on that street in Minneapolis shocked the conscience of the nation. And uh, uh, we stand with every American who was taken aback by that act. And uh, we, we, we will stand for justice uh, every day until it's achieved. The black community is in a lot of pain right now. You're a man of faith. You've marched with civil rights leaders, yeah. Bloody Sunday anniversary. How are we going to go about healing this country? Well, as the president said, we, we stand with all the peaceful protesters. And uh, uh, what's been so troubling is to see the way that uh, the anarchists and uh, criminals and even Antifa have infiltrated these protests to, uh, to riot, to loot, to bring violence against individuals and law enforcement personnel. But the first order of business was to restore law and order. Going forward, we, we believe now it's time for us to have ears to hear, to listen carefully. I met with African-American leaders here at the White House. I'll be traveling to a church nearby uh, to listen to African-American leaders and also to listen to business owners whose whose livelihoods were impacted by some of the rioting and looting. But I think it's, it's important that we, that we listen first and then I think President Trump will do like he always does, and that is continue to lead on behalf of the security and the prosperity of every American. You know, on that election night, President Trump made it clear that his aspiration was to be president of all of the American people. And when it comes to African Americans, I couldn't be more proud to be vice president to a president who oversaw the, the lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for African Americans, expanded opportunity zones to cities all across the nation by the thousands. A hundred billion dollars of investment are going into our inner cities, areas lacking jobs and opportunities. But as we go forward, it's, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to listen with open hearts about ways that, uh, that we can address some of the long-term challenges that minority communities and African Americans in our cities have faced, whether that be uh, uh, educational challenges, whether it be economic challenge or health care. We're determined to do just that. Some of these liberal politicians like Mayor Bill de Blasio won't protect his own city. There's a playbook for protecting it. He won't execute it. He's not letting people shop, but he's letting people loot. Why do you think that's happening? To see places like Fifth Avenue, places that every American, even those of us from the heartland, know about. Legendary places where people come from all over the country and around the world, destroyed and looted, was unacceptable. What the American people look to in leaders in times like this is first to respect all of our rights and then to protect the lives and property of our citizens. When I see people, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about the peaceful protesters that have come out by the thousands. It, it tells me, Jesse, that, um, that some of the long-term inequities in this country have been laid bare by the tragic death of George Floyd. And I promise you, building on our record for African Americans over the last three and a half years, that once we re restore order in our streets, uh, once we make sure that any, any families or businesses impacted uh, are, are, uh, are remedied through this, now, we're going we're gonna to listen very carefully. We're going to offer an agenda that's going to truly offer not the failed Democrat policies of the last 50 years that have failed African-Americans in many family center inner cities. We're going to offer a positive agenda and real results. And that's always the approach President Donald Trump takes. The president left the White House, took a walk over to the church that had been burned the night yeah. before, and held the Bible up. It was a very powerful symbol for the country. What did that symbol represent to you personally? What that said to me was that here in America, we will not tolerate burning churches, rioting and looting, or taking advantage of what would otherwise be peaceful protests 
to pursue criminal aims. And the president strode across Lafayette Park. He paid his respects at one of the most venerated churches in America to make that point. But he also took action. And the president's decision to deploy the National Guard here in our nation's capital uh, to ensure that, that uh, here in the very seat of our democracy that, that we preserve the law and order that is necessary for a free society. You know, that our, our, our prosperity, our way of life depends on security and it's the reason why the president took that decisive action and also called on every governor in America to utilize their National Guard in a similar fashion. It's about protecting peaceful protesters. It's about protecting businesses in the areas where this, some of the rioting has taken place and looting. Uh, and ultimately, it's, it's about creating the conditions where Americans can express themselves uh, in, in freedom and openness that we've always enjoyed through our history.